Hi, my name is Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we'll be unboxing our May Basics box. This box is all about oil pastels. We'll talk about some basics with the medium, go over some color theory, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up when working with it. Let's get into it! Our first three items are going to be a set of Holbein Academic Oil Pastels in red brown, white, and gray green. Oil pastels are fun because they're less of a detail medium and they're a little bit more painterly. So you're really just working with color and shape. Here I'll swatch out our oil pastels on some cold press paper. Oil pastels really work on any surface, but something with a good tooth will add for a lot of texture elements. Depending on how much pressure you apply when using the oil pastel will affect how much pigment goes on the surface. Light pressure will allow for more of that kind of texture, and a hard pressure will give you more of a flat color. Using that Holbein White Oil Pastel, we can fan out and see all the values available to us. Our next two oil pastels are going to come from the Sennelier Company, and it's going to be Ochre Satin and English Grey. The English Grey is this beautiful blue color. Fun fact about these oil pastels, they were originally designed with Pablo Picasso as an alternative to oil paint. The first thing you'll notice about these is that they're velvety smooth. You don't need to apply a lot of pressure when using these, and they fan out really well with other colors. Mixing colors with oil pastels are a little bit unique, whereas with a typical painterly medium you would mix colors on the side, with oil pastels you mix them right on the surface. Here I'm just using light pressure to combine the colors, but you can also overlay with the white to get different tints. Because oil pastels are pretty much just pigment and oil, they blend really well, so try different color combinations that you typically wouldn't. You'll be surprised by the results. For our surface this month, we have the Fredericks Cantone Canvas Panel. The slightly textured surface of this panel is great for oil pastels. Since we don't ship oil pastels often, I want to take a moment and showcase the fundamental techniques of this medium. I'll be using these two oversized Sennelier oil pastels, but these techniques work with any kind of oil pastel. Our first technique we've already talked about a little bit, and that's going to be soft pressure blending. This technique allows for a more subtle color transition, but it can take some time to get the color that you're looking for. I found that I'd have to go over an area several times in order to get the color that I was looking for. Our next technique takes the same principle but applies it with heavy pressure. So heavy pressure blending is great when you want to fill an area with flat color as you can kind of knock out that background a little bit more. This is also a great way to get that textural element and we can blend colors by going over that transition point. I'd use this technique if I wanted to cover up that gray canvas color completely. Our next technique is called scrumbling. Scrumbling is when you move the oil pastel in concentric circles, and it allows you to kind of free mix the color. You lose a little bit of precision, but it is a very fun effect to use. Our next technique is called sagrafito. It's an Italian word that means to scratch. I'll start by overlaying two thick layers of our oil pastel. And for this technique, we're going to need our Sketchbox Color Shaper. This custom shaper is great because it allows us to kind of carve away a little bit of that oil pastel. It's like a brush, but instead of bristles, we have a rubber nib. We can use it to scrape away those top layers of oil pastel to show that pink in the texture. Or you can use it to refine your shapes since the oil pastel is such a painterly medium. Our next technique is called stippling. We can use short, choppy strokes in order to build up that pigment. By layering this stippling, we can create an illusion of depth. This is a great technique if you want to build up some texture, or just add some pure pigment to the canvas. Our next technique will give us the smoothest transitions. First I'll lay down some pigment, and then I'm actually going to use my finger in order to blend that oil pastel. The heat of your hand helps kind of activate the oil in the pastel and allow you to have that smooth transition. Now this is where things can get messy really quickly. So make sure you're paying attention to what pigment is on what finger. That way you don't put any darks where you want lights or vice versa. You can also use a paper towel in order to blend those transitions. However, it does pull up some of that oil pastel so they'll be more transparent. And there we have it, some fundamentals with oil pastels that can really get you going. Now remember these techniques work with any type of oil pastel, so make sure to give them a shot this month. 
Our next item is a color pencil from Karen Dosh in charcoal gray. It's a great sketching pencil and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to introduce thumbnailing. Thumbnailing is when you do a quick preliminary sketch before going in with your final materials. So what I like to do is just to start with the same shape of the canvas that I'm working on. That way if I make any composition decisions, it'll reflect on what I'm using in the final piece. And because oil pastel isn't really a detail medium, I'm not worried about making anything too tight. In fact, the kind of loose sketchiness is going to be to your favor with this medium. So here I'll go through a couple ideas, maybe a landscape. We have those nice centelier colors, so maybe a beach scene. Or maybe we will do something a little bit more floral since we can get those light values with the white. Oil pastels are also great for any kind of skyline illustration because you can get those smooth, subtle transitions. And I bet we can get a really rich brown out of the red brown and the gray green, and that would probably work really well for a tree. Since we're working on a toned canvas, it's also good to kind of think about your colors. So I'm going to use this Gold Faber Crimson color pencil in order to figure out what areas I would like to have some rich color and what I would like to fade into that toned canvas. Thumbnailing is just a great tool to use to kind of generate some ideas, but also to save yourself some frustration later in the process. So definitely give it a shot this month before you go in to create your final piece. All right, so we have a good understanding of our materials and a general direction of where we want to go. For my thumbnails, I think the nighttime scene is going to be the strongest. So I'm going to go in and lay in some sketch lines. Now these will get covered with the oil pastel, so I'm not getting too caught up. It's just for a little bit of a roadmap for myself. To lay down some foundational color, I'll use the light scrumbling technique, and then I'm actually going to go in with a paper towel to kind of blend out those areas. Putting down this base layer will make it easier for me to blend colors later. Taking a bit of paper towel, I'll blend out those areas, and I'm going to leave some of that canvas gray because I really like it as a mid-tone. And to make sure that I'm not getting any kind of muddy colors, I'll transition to a clean portion of the paper towel before going into those beiges and that brown red. Now that I have the base layer of that oil pastel established, I'll go in with a little bit of a heavier pressure and blend out those areas. Now, oil pastel is a bit of a messier medium, so I would definitely suggest laying down some newsprint or some loose paper, and definitely don't work on any kind of cloth surface. It does come off with just a little bit of soap of water off of your hands, but since it's a pure pigment medium, it can stain lighter surfaces. Having worked with my oil pastel a little bit, I'm getting pretty happy with the colors. So I'm going to go in with our white in order to kind of carve out that moon and work on some of the clouds. Now I want more of that kind of gray mid-tone to show through on the clouds, so I'll blend out this base layer. That way it's not so harsh and white. In order to make that moon a little bit more pointed, I'm going to go on to the shaper and kind of carve out some of the oil pastel on the edges. Because oil pastels are so thick, you really can't get fine detail, but the shaper allows you to achieve a little bit more of that. It's worth noting that I am washing my hands regularly, so I'm not getting kind of that muddy color as I blend. And if you find that there's pigment buildup on your pastels themselves, you can just take a paper towel and just wipe off that top and it'll get you back to that pure pigment color. When working with oil pastels in this kind of like thin layering manner, it does take some time to get your colors to lay out correctly. So keep at it. The nice thing about oil pastels is you can actually block out the bottom layer by just layering more pigment. Taking our shaper, I'm going to go in and carve out some of that oil pastel so I can see more of that gray as our midtone. 
This will kind of help add some more dimension and make the clouds look fluffier. As a final step, I'll go in and tighten up some edges, blend some areas, and use our stippling technique to add some stars to the scene. And with that, our piece is done. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxMay. We love seeing what y'all create each month, and I'll see you next month.